Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Lewin, founder of SpeakUpForBlue.com, your voice for the ocean. On today's program, we're going to discuss marine mammal rescue. We've all seen it on TV, mass strandings of whales, dolphins, seals, for whatever reason, entanglement or loss of sort of navigation purposes, we, sometimes we don't know. But there's people on the front lines, volunteers, medics, and veterinarians that ensure that the animals are safe and are, can get on their way if possible. Today I have Stephen Marsh on the program to discuss what type of things go on in marine mammal rescue. Stephen, how are you? I'm fine, thanks Andrew. Good to see you. Good, good. I've, I've done the introduction a couple of times and I messed up on, on, the, on the name of the organization. <laughs> it's the British Divers Marine Life Rescue. Can you give That's us, right, yeah. Can you give us a brief description um, of, of the organization and, and, and what, it, what you guys do? Yeah, um, British Divers Marine Life Rescue, I can't even say it myself, <laughs> um, or B, BDMLR for short, okay. we all call it BDMLR, was set up in 1988. Um, a group of divers were asked to help out with a, uh, a problem in the wash, which is on the east coast of, of England, where we there was a, a seal virus called the Focine distemper virus that was killing about 33% of our population of harbour seals, and divers were asked to go out and help with the rescues. And after that, they realized that there wasn't actually a, uh, a prime rescue organization specializing in marine mammal rescue in the UK. So they right. set up British Divers Marine Life Rescue. So that's oh, okay. where the title comes from. So you don't have to be a British diver. At all. You can be any nationality. You don't have to be a diver either. Um, but that's where the history comes from. Okay. And then it grew into obviously rescuing uh, cetaceans, which are whales, dolphins and, and porpoises as well. Right. And I think people are always surprised when we talk about that in the UK because they don't realise we've got over a third of the uh, world species in our waters. You know, it's a right. very, very rich area around uh, the UK, particularly down in the Bay of Biscay. Mm -hmm. So we do get some of these big animals coming in and um, need rescuing. But we've trained since 1988, between eight and 9,000 ordinary people from all walks of life. Uh, we also train other organizations. We train Coast Guard, police, um, the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, and up in Scotland, the Scottish version, the SSPCA. work very, very closely with them. And we maintain a database of between 1,500 and 2,000 uh, trained medics, volunteers around the coast, ready to pounce on any poor, unsuspecting animal that gets on the beach that shouldn't be on the beach. Right, right. Um, we, we train about 400, 400, 500 new people every year. Wow. wow. So there's, there's quite a lot going out there. In terms of rescues or incidents, we call we get about 500 call-outs a year, mm -hmm. um, of which probably about 450 are to seals. Really? Uh, so, yeah, we, we have two species that uh, are indigenous to the UK, or not indigenous, well, they live in the UK, that's the common seal or harbour seal, as right. we call it, and the grey seal. Okay. Um, the grey seal is actually internationally important because we have about 40% of the world's population um, okay. and about 95% of, of Europe's population around our coasts. Uh, so we get about 450 of those and then about 50 cetacean rescues, okay. although we get about 500 animals coming up, you know, cetaceans coming up on the beach, um, only about yeah, ten percent of those are alive, and we get go out to rescue those wow. as well. Okay, okay. So we're going to get into those causes uh, soon at the, near the end of the interview. Um, right now, uh, this is a great that was a great introduction because uh, there's some stuff I didn't even I didn't even realize uh, in that, yeah, even go. from our research. So that that's great. Um, it gives me ideas for more questions. Um, so what we're going to do right now is is just to tell the audience is I'd, I'd like to get a little background on on yourself and how you got to be involved uh, with the organization. Then I want to go into, we're going to discuss the organization, uh, how it works, uh, It's because it is based on a lot of volunteers and a lot of the work of the volunteers and training those volunteers. And then we're going to go into, look at the, the, the marine mammal strandings um, and look at, uh, you know, what, what, what type of strandings are they, can they be prevented, and, and so on. So let's get into it. Um, and and uh, let's get into yourself. So how... You know, why did you become interested in, in this type of work? How did you become interested in this type of work? Well, from, from a kid, I, I was a little kid who was on the bicycle with the binoculars going out to watch wildlife all the time whenever I could. And then I started working in a, a very commercial arena in advertising and the car industry and, and did that for a few decades. I won't tell you how many. 
Um, And then eventually when I came out of that, I was already a volunteer for British Divers Marine Life Rescue. And uh, I've now been a volunteer for about 10 years with them anyway. And I was working as a freelance marketeer and uh, was called out to the London Whale Rescue. You remember the northern bottlenose whale that came up the Thames into the centre of London? Yep. Well, well, I was the beach master for that, so I was on the beach actually looking after the uh, sort of non-caring side of, of the rescue so I was looking after the, getting the volunteers in liaising with the police and other other people like that okay. and then I went out on the barge with that animal out to sea we were hoping to get it back into the sea to actually let it go out and uh, live a normal life right and on that rescue it's very emotional rescue you know the eyes of the world were on us yes. Yes. and on the barge I just walked past this animal and the eye of the animal sort of followed me as well I just oh, there's a sentient being it's you know it's a big animal, it's intelligent, and I just decided there that I wanted to work in the arena as well. Right. So looked around for a job, got a job with another charity called Orca, and Orca runs whale and dolphin surveys out at sea. Okay. So spent three years with them helping to turn the charity around, get it back on its feet again, had a great time, saw a lot of animals. Right. Um, and then when my three-year contract came up, uh, came towards the end of that, I got a phone call from Alan Knight, who's a good friend, and he's the uh, the chair of British Divers, right? Uh, BDMLR, saying, right now your contract's up with them. Will you come and work with us? So I thought, yeah, okay, <laughs> so I did. So although I've been involved with British Divers for, as I say, about ten years, yeah. I've been had my feet under the desk, as it were, for. Uh, just over a year, but prior to that, because it's fairly local, the head office is fairly local to me, I was always in and out, and uh, was one of the original three advanced marine medics that we have as well, so I had a little bit more training than a lot of other people. Right, But um, it's a great great life, it's very varied, and um, can be quite exciting as well. And can you, do you know how many calls you've been out on since you've been working with with, the the organization well yeah I, I don't live in an area where we get an awful lot that's okay. the thing I'm down in the southeast of England um, okay. so our main call out down here would be to a few seals that come up but I've, I occasionally we'll get something big so I'll end up driving up to the north coast of Scotland okay. uh, but in terms of numbers I've got no idea maybe sort of three dozen something like that okay. over the years okay um, but involved in a lot more being on the end of the telephone and certainly in the exactly. job uh, helping to coordinate other people going out Exactly, and your title is, is it Director of Operations or? No, no, no. O- Operations Manager. Operations Manager, okay, yeah. so so you yeah. essentially you're, like you said, you're on the phone quite a bit with volunteers, coordinating volunteers to go out to certain calls, or do you take the calls in sometimes? And, and, yeah, and we have, disperse? Um, basically the, the, the charity looks big and small, I mean obviously there are a lot of people involved with it, but in terms right. of staff, we've got two and a half staff, that's okay. it. Um, I work part time, or I'm paid part time. Tend to work a little bit longer than part time, uh, as you do with any charity. Yeah. Uh, we've got Julia, who's our administrator, does a great job in the office as well. She takes a lot of the, the rescue calls, uh, and then we've got Jamie, who runs our seal hospital that we've got up in Scotland. So those are the two full time workers. Right. right. But then around the coast, we have regional coordinators who look after their own regions, and they will. Um, coordinate activity in their area, whether it's rescues or training mm-hmm. or fundraising, things like that. So those are our, our main um, staff out in the field. But again, they're all all volunteers, so we do right. depend on, on their support. Yeah. Uh, in the evenings, when we put the phones off, then we have out-of-hours coordinators. So there's a different number for out-of-hours, and they have a lot of experience in coordinating rescues right. um, over the phone as well. So basically, when we record, when we're coordinating over the phone, we've got all the details of our medics, we're looking at maps, we've got all the details of the local vets, of uh, other services we can call in, Coast Guard, things like that. Right. So we're the, the backroom boys, if you like, actually helping those people who are down on the beach yeah. uh, or in the estuary at, at the time. Okay. So what, now when you first, let, let, we're, let's get back to, to, to you because I want to know when you first started uh, sort of working with the, with the BDMLR. Mm-hmm. You, know, you had to go through some sort of, I, I would imagine, some sort of training because you guys offer training. Did you have to go through training back then at, to become sort of a marine mammal medic? Yeah, we, we run uh, courses all around the UK. Um, I think this year we're probably doing about 30, 35 courses, something okay. like that. Okay. So we promote them in a local area. 
people come on the course. It's a day's course. So right. in the morning we have lectures on the biology of marine mammals. Right. Uh, and we're looking particularly to, at cetaceans, the whales, dolphins, porpoises, and the seals. Uh, so we look at the biology identification, which is key to what we do because we need to know if what species it is to know whether it's in the right place or not and how to treat it. Um, they're, they're all quite different. Mm -hmm. uh, another lecture is on cetacean rescue and our options, our first aid, what we can do with those. And then another one about seals, uh, similar but focusing on seals. And also another one on health and safety, which is paramount here. I mean, we always say that the life of our medics comes first yes. you know, because obviously we, we, we are... Uh, we rely on them, and yep. the animal should should come secondary. It's very, very difficult when you're out on a shout because people do get a bit gung-ho and yeah. forget their own safety, so we do have to drum it in, in yeah. them all the time to, to look after themselves. Also, you're, you're also dealing with a lot of, I mean, you're, you're dealing with large animals, um, and you're also <laughs> dealing with, uh, w which you could get hit by an animal by accident, you know, uh, and that, that would, <laughs> I would imagine that would hurt. <laughs> Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, in, in the afternoon, we, we then run the practical sessions, right. and, and one of those, well, the, we have three practical sessions. One is how to um, catch a seal, jump on it, do first aid, check it out, assess it, and lift it and carry it and transport it. Another one is how to um, assess the condition of a cetacean mm -hmm. and give that first aid as well, because obviously on the beach, there are certain things that we can do to make their life a little bit more comfortable at that time right. until a decision is, is made about what's going to happen to it. Um, we teach people how to lift a dolphin. So we have life-size dummy dolphins that we fill with water so that they actually weigh about 150, 170 kilos, which is the weight of, of our common dolphin okay. out here. So we, we teach them how to lift that with a tarpaulin. Uh, and we also tell them, show them how to lift a, how to refloat a whale, a pilot whale that weighs two tons. So we've got pilot whale models that we fill with water and when they're filled they weigh two tons yeah and we lift those using the the pontoon system that you may have seen the bright yellow mat yeah. and pontoon system yeah that was devised by project jonah down in in new zealand they use them down there for the uh, mass strandings we have them up here for the uk and europe as well okay so it's a full day um it's very tiring it's very physical yeah obviously and then all of those people who've been on the training we get all of their details they go into our database and we always warn them that they might be driving home and get a call out from us. It has happened. I All think right. the record is, is 10 minutes. <laughs> you know, somebody's trained and they're on the way home and they get a call. It's a good test. Away because, <laughs> yeah, on, on their way home, there's something on the beach. Yeah. Uh, so we, we're pretty inclusive. You know, we try to get as many people involved as possible. Obviously, we do have a lot of people who've gone a little bit further with their training. We have another stage, which is called the advanced medic um, okay. status. And for that, you have to have uh, a powerboat handling certificate. You have to have human first aid certificate. You have to have um, seal handling experience. So we like them to go to a seal hospital to actually work with seals, learn how to tube feed them, um, because they can be quite uh, quite feisty little animals. Oh, I can imagine, and, yeah. Um, yeah. Other things as well. We